So my question for this video is why doesn't the moon fall into the earth? And the reason why I'm asking this question is I want to uh, show you how we can model satellite motion as projectile motion. So if you imagine this is the earth and maybe we have a comically large cannon. If I fire a cannonball out, um, it's possible that we can um, send it out fast enough, or let's, let's just assume it's possible that we can send it out fast enough that it behaves kind of like the moon. And what I want you to consider here is when the ball is fired, so let's zoom in, it will have some horizontal speed that is constant, but it should start to drop once it leaves the barrel. So again, constant horizontal speed, but now it falls faster and faster. And we get that parabola effect, right? Well, the faster we get that cannonball going, um, the wider the curvature is. So it might look something like this. And the wider the curvature, let me include those vertical components there. So the wider the curvature, the more likely that cannonball's trajectory will match that of the curvature of the Earth. So if the Earth curves away either at the same rate that the ball is falling towards it or at a faster rate, then what will happen is the ball will enter a state where it is just continuously falling, kind of like that, maybe that nightmare that some of people have had where you're just falling forever. Well, this ball is just falling forever, but not into the Earth. It would be falling around the Earth. And that's essentially what causes satellite motion. So the moon doesn't fall into the Earth because the motion of the Earth um, and the shape of the Earth. So uh, in, on top of that, the, the moon is going fast enough. Um, so when it comes to satellite motion, really what matters here is the speed and how far away from the Earth. Now let's talk about that real quick. So let's say that I know the height of my cannon. still stuck on the curve. Here we go. So let's say I know the height of my cannon. We'll call that H. Um, and I want to know how fast I need to shoot the, the ball out for it to enter a circular motion. So if we're gonna if we're gonna model the orbit as a circular motion, that means we're gonna have a centripetal force. The only force acting on the ball would be gravity. Um, but let's say, again, this is supposed to be analogous to the moon. So maybe that height there is um, a satellite that we put there ourselves. And we want to figure out how fast it needs to be going. Well, if it's not close enough to the center uh, or to the, to the surface, um, G isn't quite 9.8. So it's better instead of setting the R centripetal force equal to mg, uh, it would be better here to use uh, Newton's law of universal gravitation and set it equal to our gravitational constant times the mass of the Earth and the mass of the satellite over the distance from their centers of mass. In this case, we would also want the radius of the Earth here. We don't really care about the radius of the satellite. That would be small compared to the scale that we're on. So we get mv squared um, over r is equal to g big M little m over r squared. So again, this is mass of the Earth. This is the satellite. Here, which mass is this? Well, 
it's the one that's being accelerated. Excuse me. Um, so this would be the mass of the satellite. Notice we don't care about the mass of the satellite. Um, so the speed we would want would be root g mass of the planet times how far away we are. Um, well, we'd have r on top here, because we multiply both sides by r. So this is actually not r squared. Um, but in this case, remember, r would be the radius of the Earth plus the altitude we want the satellite at. And there we go. That's, that's pretty much how it works.